Good day and welcome back. Today we're going to look at uh, terminologies that are used commonly in genetics. So let's have a look at them and then I'll explain one at a time. Okay, let me move this, this direction here so that we can see clearly. Now the first term here is tricks. Traits. Simply put, in genetics, we refer to characteristics as traits. It's just a substitute word that we use. Otherwise, we know what uh, a characteristic is, and it is what gives us or uh, what makes us look the way we look or behave the way we behave. So our behavior, our appearances are just our characteristics, otherwise our traits. Now, locus. Before I explain locus, let's look at this pair here. This is a homologous pair of chromosomes. And remember, in each pair, one comes from the father, one comes from the mother. Chromosomes form when chromatin material, which is basically DNA wrapped up around some uh, protein molecules or protein histones. They form when this chromatin material or network condenses, thickens, or become more visible, and form these particular or typical x shaped structures that we refer to as chromosomes. I'll elaborate more on that at another stage. In each of these homologous pairs, I already explained that one comes from the father and the other one comes from the mother. They are homologous. Homo means same, and they are said to just be similar, but not exactly identical. To be identical is more or less a very heavy word to use. So they are just similar by virtue of the fact that they have the same genes, the same size, the same shape. They are positioned at the same area in the karyotype, and again, their genes are positioned at the same position or are found at the same relative position. For example, let's say I have here the gene for eye color <clears throat> on this position on this chromosome here. The corresponding gene should be found on the corresponding homologue of this chromosome at the same position. So if I put it here, another gene for eye color, then obviously what I've done here is wrong. Because if we look this side, this gene is here on the left chromatid of this chromosome. Meanwhile here, I've put my gene on the right chromatid of this chromosome. It's no longer correct. Therefore, to make it correct, I said homologous chromosomes must have the same genes and at the same locus, at the same position. So here will be at the same position. And this position where we find genes on chromosomes, that's what we call the locus of the gene. So that's what locus means, the position of a gene on a chromosome. Now, these two genes are genes that determine eye color. They could be the same or they could be different. Let's make them different. Let's say the one on the left, on the chromosome on the left, let's say this one here, codes for green eye color. This person would have green eyes if this gene is expressed. And it's coming from the father's chromosome. And let's assume the one on the right will code, first I put it on the same locus, say this one on the right will code for brown eye color. Okay. Interestingly, these are two genes that code for the same characteristic. The characteristic itself or the trait is eye color, but one goes for green, the other goes for brown. Therefore, we could say that they are 
different versions of the same gene because that gene calls for one characteristic. There are different versions of the same genes that we refer them to then as alleles. Therefore, alleles are different versions or alternate forms of the same gene. Okay, so let's see the next page here. Now, genotype. A genotype is the genetic makeup or combination of alleles located on homologous chromosomes that determine a particular trait of an organism. So our genotype simply includes the kind of genes, uh, sorry, say genotype, type of genes that we have whose effect is to determine the trait that an organism will then be expressing in what we call the phenotype. If an individual therefore has these alleles such that they are identical, like what we see here, this is pink and this is pink, and you will see they're all on the left chromatid of the two chromosomes. If the alleles are therefore identical, then the individual will be homozygous for that particular characteristic. Again, homo means same same for the alleles. For example, alleles that appear the same are what we use in our genetics. We could say capital T with capital T. I'm using letters that are familiar for height in tea plants. Capital T, capital T. I'm sure capital T is the same as capital T. Hence, since they are the same, we say that this person is homozygous for this condition. Or it could be small t, small t. As long as they are the same, then this person is homozygous again for this condition. Now, it could happen that the alleles are different, just like with my example before this uh, page here, where I was using eye color, different eye colors. It could happen that the alleles are different, hence, we'll say, the person is heterozygous for that condition. Hetero stands for different. You will see here the color is brownish, and here it is green, which are totally different. So if I want to represent this, I will write maybe capital T and small t. So capital T is not the same as small t. Therefore, this person is heterozygous for the condition. That's what it means. The phenotype. The phenotype is the observable physical or biochemical characteristics of an organism as determined by both genetic makeup and environmental influences. First thing, I would like you to understand that the way we appear, our phenotype is our physical appearance. I will re explain that. The way we appear is being determined by our genetic makeup. Our behavior determined by our genetic makeup. That's the combination of genes and how they interact with each other to express a final phenotype. And our appearance or even behavior is also influenced by the, by the environment. That's why if two, if twins, a set of twins are born who are identical, their genetic makeup is exactly the same, but physically they could even appear different, maybe in size or behaviorally, because the environment could influence them. Say one of the twins grows in a wealthy family where he eats or he or she eats proper food and balanced diet all the time and eats enough while the other grows up in a family where there's more or less always hunger and starvation. One will be bigger than the other, or one will grow stunted compared to the other. It means that food, since it comes from the environment, it means it has affected the way these twins will look like, although internally they have the same genetic traces or the same genetic makeup. 
or one could grow at the seminary with priests and he will behave like most probably like uh, a religious person and the other if the other one grows with Turks then he will adopt that kind of uh, behavior so that's how the environment can influence the phenotype of organisms apart from their genetic makeup now when i say when i write here phenotype is the observable physical characteristics for the physical this is very straightforward how things how organisms look like and this is the part that we mostly attach phenotype to but i added this one here biochemical characteristics so that we can realize that phenotypes can also adopt a biochemical nature apart from a physical one so when we talk of phenotype we could mean for example if i say there are some bacteria that produce the enzyme cellulase to break down cellulose while some bacteria cannot produce cellulase and i say the ones that produce cellulase i could say they are cellulase positive and the other ones are cellulase negative then the ones that produce cellulase have the positive phenotype of cellulase production it is a phenotype although i can't look at them and see them producing it but at least since they produce it that's the characteristics that they express therefore it adds up to be one of their phenotypes but a biochemical one again in genetics we are going to cover a section where we deal with blood groups and there are four types of blood groups that's a b a b and o therefore when we classify this blood into different groups these blood groups also represent the phenotypes for this blood but we all know we cannot look at a sample of blood and say this is blood group a or this is blood group o just by looking at it physically yet we call those groups blood phenotypes why then do we call them blood phenotypes we call them blood phenotypes because we are basing we are basing we are basing our knowledge or we are basing that on the fact that they have that chemical characteristic if we put subjects these blood samples to some biochemical testing they will behave differently from each other hence biochemically we can place them into different groups that represent their phenotypes therefore phenotype is not just about physical appearance but it's also about the biochemical nature of organisms okay in genetics we don't want to use the word child we want to use an alternative word which is offspring because it cuts across child imagine me saying for example the child of a plant i'm sure it would sound very weird or the child of a mosquito it sounds very weird and funny but then if i say offspring of a plant it is a word that cuts across and it doesn't pose any problem to listen to it being said that way the offspring of a plant or the offspring of a mosquito it sits very well so in genetics we just use another word for child which is offspring filial filial is the relation of a child or an offspring to a parent so a parent and an offspring always share, share a relation and that relation is what we call the filial filial kind of relation there are different types of crosses in genetics we will have monohybrid crosses which is a genetic cross in which the inheritance pattern of just one trait is under observation otherwise the inheritance pattern of only one trait is taken into consideration and the hybrid cross is a genetic cross in which the inheritance patterns of two different traits are under investigation. Okay, let me go back to monohybrid. When Mendel was doing his investigations, he first started by checking what happens when 
parents reproduce and how the traits of the parents are expressed in the offspring. His first experiment, he was just verifying the pattern of inheritance of one trait only, for example, height in pea plants. Hence, he was checking with either tall or alleles for shortness. That was only one trait taken into account. But then at some point in his investigation, he decided to see how alleles are passed down if he has to investigate the inheritance patterns of two different traits. Say, for example, height with its two alleles and flower color with its two alleles. So for each trait, under Mendelian genetics, a trait will be having two alleles. So if we are investigating two traits, therefore we expect to have four alleles. That's for a dihybrid cross. We'll see that again when we get into dihybrid crosses. Now P1, P stands for parent, and one stands for first. Therefore P1 stands for first parents. These parents are the ones who are going to give rise to the first generation of offspring, the first filial generation. They are the first parents or considered to be the first parents of our genetic investigations. We could decide to start with the first parents or we could decide to start our genetic cross from what we chose to represent as the second parents. Otherwise, the second parents are simply the first generation offspring who have also reproduced. Understand that when an individual reproduces, he or she becomes a parent. So our first generation of offspring, when they reproduce, they become the second parent. It's just like children also giving birth. It means that these children who gave birth will also become parents. Those are the second parents and the list goes on. Our third parents are the children of the second generation, otherwise the children of the second parents, and the, our third parents will give birth to the third generation and goes on. F1, F stands for filial and one stands for first. Therefore, F1, we're looking at first filial generation first filial generation. These are the first generation of spring. These are the children of the P1. F2 are the second filial generation. These are the second generation of spring. They are the children of the P2. In other words, they are also the children of the F1 because it is the F1 that becomes the P2. F3, third generation offspring, they are the children of the P3. Otherwise, they are also the children of the F2 because it is the F2 that becomes the P3. Okay. So, so far, that will be it for terminologies. Thank you very much. And I will see you again in our next video. In the next chapters, I'll be able to see you again. Thank you very much. Digest this one so far. Cheers.